Welcome to the New Weather Order Podcast, exclusively on the Hard Knock Digital Poetry Channel. Now give it up to your host people, MM2K. What's up peoples, what's up peoples, what's up peoples? It is your boy, MM2K, and I have a very special guest with me today. He goes by the name Neethals. What's up, Neethals? How's it going, man? Hey, man, it's going well. You know, just waking up a little late. But, uh, you know, I was just grinding in the good old uh, UPS <laughs> game. So, Hey, bro, no, yeah. no, Neethals, look, we got families. We don't want babies and villages burnt. Please do not disparage <laughs> the greatest game of all time. You know, at least on my channel, man. I got kids, you know what I'm saying? Because... It's crazy out here, man. I mean, we're going to talk about it. It's crazy out here. And maybe you can uh, um, um, talk about it where we got people that are really upset that you uh, aren't, <laughs> that you have an opinion, a critical opinion of Death Stranding. So before we get too deep into the material, I mean, what are your thoughts on that, man? Uh, you know, I just find it weird. So I always practice that you should play a game before you trash it. And if you were to review a game, you must beat it. At the most, you can maybe do it in impressions, but you should see a game through if you're going to review it. So I'm practicing what I preach, but for whatever reason, I'm getting feedback that I should stop. I, I don't understand it. Maybe it's because they feel that if I do beat it, they can't necessarily damage control it, that they can't say like, oh, you didn't get to the good part. Oh, you didn't complete it. I, I don't know. I have a feeling they just don't want me to beat it for a reason. Well, let's let's go over everything in totality, right? Because, uh-oh, what's going on here? I mean, I'm trying to switch some things up, and, and unfortunately, uh -oh, let me do, let me do something real quick. Let me do something real quick. But you, is there, there you go. Y'all look, y'all looking at the magic being made here, behind the scenes stuff, <laughs> on MM2K. Golly, what? Okay. Uh, yeah, we're getting that together. I gotta say, if anybody, I don't know if it's like this for Android, but the Twitch app has some slick features. So, like, I just switched from um, the Twitch app because I was retweeting the thing to our little notes here, and actually, the Twitch video will stay minimized in my bottom right corner. Like, it, it came with me to the other app. Oh wow! Oh okay. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's also like that on Android, but. You know, I really do like the way the Twitch app does work. I wish YouTube would do this, but then again, they want to charge you for those type of features, anyways. Yeah, I, the Twitch app has made some 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 big strides, man. It used to be like full doo doo suit. Yeah, it used to just be bad. Um, and you know what's annoying about Twitch? They don't do the quality thing for you. On like, yeah, you have to do that yeah, manually. Yeah, exactly. And I would wish too that Twitch would do something in the realm of. Uh, Getting, I get it. There's like too many people on there, so the more bit rates that they allow, the the big, the, the more crowded their servers would get. But I mean, if they had the quality, of but they're their premier service. Yeah, like, I know. You got to invest, and you're Amazon. To be real with you, they're yeah, Amazon. Yeah, yeah. It, and yeah, you're right. Yeah, Deethos. I know. I'm. You know me. I'm trying to. Hey, look. I'm trying to get in the damage control mood because <laughs> I fear for my life. I don't want them to do to me what they're doing to you for Death Stranding, man. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm trying to damage control for, <laughs> for Twitter, for Twitch. With that said, I want to thank everybody. Yo, Joe Hansel, what's going on? Hey, y'all tweet this out. This is going to be a special, a special show. I'm going to do it too. I'm going to tweet it out right now. Yeah, there we go. All right. It is tweeted out. It is tweet. It has been tweeted. All right. So Neethos, let's talk about it, bro. Let's 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 go over the history. We 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 could chop this up three ways, man. We we gonna first talk about the history. Let's talk about our thoughts on the backlash. Why your you know your life is being threatened and you gotta hide out in the basement right? <laughs> until the next Kojima game where you can you know make amends for your sins. And then three, let's talk about what what we think happened. 
But while we do all that, I want to let everybody know that you can call in to this number. We're not taking live calls just yet. As a matter of fact, let me make sure that I get out of Skype. We're not taking live calls just yet. But if you want to just leave us a voicemail, we're going to go over during the show. Or if you want to wait until we're taking live calls, that's fine. You can do that there. But there's the phone number, 724-739-3612. All right. But let's do this first, Nethos. Let, let, let's talk about the history here. And just make sure we're all on the same page. All so, right. So we got Def Strand in here, right? Gang. Mm-hmm. Game looked iffy to me and you, right? Yep. Yep. We, we we clowned it, you know what I'm saying, the gameplay, and we thought it was important, though, even though we were clowning it, to, to review the game. And then, but you've said, now tell me if this is right or wrong. You particularly said on multiple occasions that at least the two of us, we were going to play it, even though we thought the gameplay was iffy. And I remember you asking, like in podcasts before the game released, who's going to beat it first? Am I right or am I wrong? You are correct, sir. Um, Devin got the box in. I can't sub with Prime. Yeah, you should be able to sub with Prime, bro. I appreciate it, man. I can use it. I can use everything. I can use it all, man. We gotta get. <laughs> we gotta get. Uh, we gotta get. Um, um, protection for for Nethos, man. Uh, yeah. Right, so you did say that, okay? So we said months ahead of time we were gonna play the game. I know you're gonna play it. I was gonna play it. Um, big ups to the follow from Cold Blood Sensei, man. Appreciate it. Um. And we got the Kojima stands and the ponies out here. They're doing the best damage control over this gameplay. They're like, oh, this is enthralling. This is fantastic. This is, you know, the best thing ever. Oh, and now uh, on top of that damage control, because we've been calling them out. You've been calling them out. You're like, hold on. This is what you're doing here in this area. This is what you're doing here in that area. And then the Mm -hmm. latest tactic now is now that you're playing the game. More so than I want to say 90% of the people that are standing for this game, that you're playing the game, that now we're seeing people who, or anyone that does a deep analysis of this game and likes it, we're seeing them being attacked. And, and you're a prime example of that. So, yep. um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think it comes down to people just realizing what this game really is. So when they showed the gameplay or whatever, we always called out like, look, the game's pretty and all, right? Yeah. I'm not taking that away. Yeah. But it looks kind of empty. It looks like you're really not doing much. It looks like the gameplay really just might be a uh, majority walking. I guess there is vehicles, but I count just like traveling in general as just basically a walking simulator. There's not much going on. You're not fighting people off. You're not really uh, <laughs> engaged in the world as best I can describe it. So... Because we said that stuff, people damage control. They said, well, Kojima loves to pull ruses. That's what he's actually yeah. famous for. He, so what yeah. he did was he edited the map to avoid spoilers. The game is much more alive. There's much more to do. We get the game in our hands. It is exactly what he fucking showed us. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you feel so goddamn lonely. In fact, I think he actually did say in interviews, you're going to feel lonely in this game. And wow, he really accomplished that. But like, I think at the end of the day, the people who thought he was editing the map, who thought he was pulling a ruse, even they didn't find the gameplay appealing, right? That's why they convinced themselves, oh, he was hiding the good stuff. But now that we know the good stuff we're really looking for typically just simply isn't there, they're going to have to switch to a new way to, I guess, deal with it. Maybe they thought like, oh, well, this game's for intellectuals. It's not for the typical gamer. It's not for your pew pew gamers. And I don't know. I, I feel, we get threatened. And like Z gets it the most, but they say like we don't have the mental fortitude for these type of games, which I find silly because we're all gamers at the end of the day. We want good games. I, I don't see us really having hugely different standards for rating these games or whatever. We all look for similar things. So the fact that this game gets a pass, I wonder if it's because it's a PlayStation exclusive and maybe because it has Kojima's name on it. I don't know. We'll get really into it, though. Yo, yo, yo. Okay, okay. I, I just wanted to make sure that people could hear me because all my audio and stuff was coming through the one place. But that's good. People can hear me. Okay, so, and let us know if any of our audio and stuff, if you can't hear it, um, because we're going to be taking phone calls and all that fun stuff. I want to make sure everybody can hear everything. That said, Nethos, um, 
correct me if I'm wrong. Well, let me go to the chat real quick. Let me go to the chat. We got Joe Hansel out here in the chat. He says, shout out to the people that are making bridges and roads. Makes the traveling better. What are your thoughts on that, Neefles? Oh, my God. So this is what I will say he does something in a positive way. So when you get introduced to a new area, of course, it's empty or whatever because the online functionality isn't there. Because how it works is you have to connect a certain area to the online network, and then the online functionality comes into play. So, like, I remember when I got to this new area, I believe it was Chapter 3, the world is empty or whatever. I have to uh, just do a chicken run to get across certain areas and get away from certain enemies. You saw my famous clip of me just running straight, and the people couldn't catch me, and I ran into a bush, and that was, like, repellent to the enemies. I don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah. But, um, so, after I connected that area, and I went back to the same spot I was in the beginning of Chapter 3, suddenly there was a big highway there. And that was a community highway they built. So I was able to get to one destination very easily. And I thought that was dope. That we came together, we built this highway, so we don't have to suffer again like we did in the beginning of the chapter. Yeah, I thought that, I think that is cool. And that is a positive. I will give people more. No, 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 that's cool. And that's cool. And, and, and I've had to say on multiple occasions because, and this is a perfect segue to my next point that I wanted to ask you about, Nethos. So, there definitely are likable elements of the game, right? Absolutely. Every game has likable elements. Like, look, we make clown games, right? We're mm -hmm. like, I think Crackdown 3 is the best example yes. because at one point that was going to be a big exclusive from Microsoft. They wanted that to sit up next to Halo and Gears and they came out right from their mouths. We can't deny it. Now, Crackdown, to be honest with you, and I am honest, I have never booted up the campaign because that type of game isn't for me. But from everybody who's played it, they don't care for it. From what I've seen, I probably wouldn't care for it. Though I don't plan to do a review or anything, so that's why I never did it, right? Yeah. But even with that said, I'd still booted up the multiplayer to try it out and give my fair opinion on it. Because I want to play games before I talk about the games. But even with Crackdown, from the gameplay I've seen, I can say a positive for the game is the campaign with the HDR looks pretty. That's a redeeming factor of the game. Even though the game is dog shit for the most part, that's what it's claimed as, it still has a good merit of it looks pretty. And some people who like that game, who like maybe Saints Row, may enjoy the game. Yeah. Even a dog shit game like that, 62 on Metacritic, we joke about it. It has like a few redeeming, redeeming qualities. qualities. Just because a dog shit game is a dog shit game doesn't mean I hate every aspect. Exactly. No. I, I think. To me, that makes perfect sense. It's just that, unfortunately, we got people saying, right? Um, they're saying things like, you know, because you're bringing up the game and positive aspects that, and that you're going so in depth, Nethos, that you like the game. It's just that you're capping. You're trying to follow the the bandwagon. But we do we do analysis for stuff all the time that we don't like. Like you just gave the example of Crackdown. Um mm -hmm. on this very here channel, your boy, I've reviewed Uncharted 4, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Outer Worlds, which I'm like of a different mind state of you, I believe, on all three of those games. I don't like them. Yep. I don't like them. Yep. But I've beat you Uncharted 4. I went, every time that I booted up the game, I did it solely for the sake of Twitch. I mean, yeah, for Twitch. Every time I booted up Horizon Zero Dawn, even though I couldn't bear through that whole game, I did it for the sake of Twitch. And the same thing with The Outer Worlds. Even though I can't, I'm not, I'm at a spot now where I think the rest of the game might be better for me, but, I, I, I'm, but I'm doing it for the sake of Twitch. And that's to say because we don't sometimes by not just talking about games, but playing them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We, we run into situations a where we don't like the game, but we're still playing it because we're showing that we're vetting this out and we're just not talking out the side of our ass or yep. B we run into situations like what, Nethos, where you do end up liking the game even though you had a suspicious eye tour towards it. Now, do you have an example of such? Um, 
Yeah, so let's see. Like Battlefield Four, when that game came out, mm-hmm. uh, before actually before it came out, the game looked a little iffy. Like it looked like uh, the campaign may have some glitches. It looked like the campaign may not be good, and then may be recycled from Battlefield Three because Battlefield Four came out like I think only two years after Battlefield Three, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And I remember going into them like, you know, I'll probably enjoy the multiplayer, but I don't know about this campaign. Well, I played through the campaign, and I gotta say, I preferred that campaign over Battlefield 3's campaign, actually. And so I ended up liking something I thought was suspicious, though, to be fair, the beginning was slow or whatever. I had to keep playing for me to really enjoy it, and I'm glad I did it. Well, and I, I, w- I would like to add to that, that Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, remember how we used to talk shit on Horizon Zero Dawn? Like, as Xbox mm-hmm. brethren, that's the game that you clown, Horizon Zero Dawn. That's a very, like, they're using a the bullet point polarizing game. That's a very polarizing game. But you played it, and you actually like it now, right? Yep, and actually, that's a fantastic example because uh, it's a recent one, actually. Yeah. But when I was playing in the beginning, Moss, I was all on the hate train with you. I would say, yeah. wow, this game is bad like yep. i did not like the beginning of it at all but after the first hour and a half i would say maybe two hours but i think it's an hour and a half i the world just opened up to me and i don't know something just clicked i just started really liking the game and i have the game on the backlog right now because i got these other games out but i will say i can't wait to be able to dive back into it i do generally enjoy that game so if there isn't a bigger hate train than horizon zero dawn and if, it, if there wasn't something more unpopular, because even I was like, hold on, Nethos, you can't like this game. But if there wasn't anything more unpopular for somebody that's an Xbox guy, right, to to, to backtrack on, it, w- it, it would be Horizon Zero Dawn. So the simple fact that you put your, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying, you put your money on the wood, you played the game, and you discovered that you liked it, and you were vocal about it, proves that you just don't ride no hate train. I would surmise, right? Mm-hmm. So why do you, th- again, I know we keep circling back here, but why do you think that these Kojima stands and these ponies, and I know I'm answering my own question by, by describing them, but these Kojima stands <laughs> and these ponies, they're riding that train that you're riding the hate train when we got, like you said, recent proof that, Something that an unpopular belief you're willing to be vocal about, like liking Horizon Zero Dawn after playing it. Why do you think they're stuck to that? I, you know, I think they're just afraid. I think they're afraid that I'm playing through this game, I'm experiencing the game in full, yep. and that they can't just fall back on any argument. You can always say, if I start at, stopped at Chapter 2, maybe stopped at Chapter 3, right? Yeah, like yeah. how they would want me to. Yep. They could say, well, you didn't get to the good part, man. You didn't get to Chapter <laughs> 4 in that big battle. You didn't get to Chapter 5 and have all this crazy shit happen. Like, they can't fall back on any of that because I have beat the game, I experienced the game in full. Yeah, yep. And yep. To, the, to, to the same token, I mean, by me playing games as well, there's games like God of War, like, remember the hate, all the hate I was talking about God of War? And I even watched mm-hmm. Noah play the straight, the part with the stranger. And I was like, oh, that looks corny. That's that same scripted X, I mean, PlayStation movie, interactive movie stuff until I played that part in my hands. And I never felt so powerful as a, as a game character like I did at that moment. And it hooked me for the rest of the game. You know what I'm saying? So that changed my perspective, playing the game opposed to talking about it. Now, a, a more unpopular example for me would be Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Now, I know a lot of people don't like it. There's people that do like it. I originally was on the board with the people that don't like it. Like, what is the purpose of this game? This makes no sense. And then when I got it in my hands, I ended up liking it. So playing games can work in both halves. You can play a game that you don't like and still don't like when you finish it, but at least you put... You know what I'm saying? At least you're not talking out the side of your ass. And then there's the flip side of it to where playing a game that you originally were skeptical about can make you like the game. It's not about being on no hate train because, again, there's nothing more unpopular for someone like Nethos than to say, I liked Horizon Zero Dawn after we've all bashed it, you know, skeptically. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I really did used to be the punching bag. I think right now it might be... Obviously, Death Stranding is getting a lot of that, but uh, I think Concrete Genie yeah. is like the universal punching bag yeah, of the exactly. year. Yeah. Like that, that did not. 
I think people were trying to say I was scoring better than Ori and stuff, and that didn't happen. But, um, you know, I just don't need to try the game. I can't give any impressions without playing it. But what I do want to add to what you just said earlier is I think we have a very famous example with you in particular, Moss, of you supposedly loving. I say supposedly loving because you don't actually love this game. You just <laughs> enjoy and play from time to time. Mm-hmm. It's Fallout 76. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people say you're full of shit, you don't like the game or whatever, and the game is dog shit. But I would say probably at least 90, maybe even 95% of the people who say that stuff to you mm-hmm. never even booted yep. up Fallout 76 yep. exactly. in their life. Yep. I mean, w- w- what's more fraudulent? People who actually played the game, who gave their genuine opinion on the game, or people who just never booted up and call it dog shit off what? A crowd of other people's opinion. Like, I don't understand this mentality of like, oh, well, a bunch of people said mm-hmm. this game is bad, so it must be bad. Like, at the end of the day, you always got to play a game for yourself. I think what it is, Neethals, is that, and that's a great example, because me and you talked about this behind the scenes. I talked to Butter, and I get it. I know I was out there a lot. I was defending a lot of lies, because that would be like me saying, oh, in, in Death Stranding, you never get a gun. And then you're playing it, Neethals, and you're like, hold on. I may not be the biggest fan of Death Stranding, but yeah, you get a gun. You know, it may not. Yeah. You know know what I'm saying? That's a lie. You know, and then there's just lies after lies. And me personally, I'm I'm someone, I just got a thing about lying. When we got all this evidence in front of us, we got all this ability to play stuff. I like for people to be informed. I hate for lies to be spread. With that being said, Fallout 76 is a seven and a half to me. I told Nethos, I think Fallout 4 was an, was an abomination because all it was was mm-hmm. Fallout 3 with Minecraft elements. So even though I consider myself a Bethesda fanboy, I, I, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of their last two iterations as far in comparison to other ones. With that being said, um, I think what it is, Nethos, is that now it's cool to be over the top. You know what yep. I'm saying? Like, there's no gray area. Like, something is trash or there has to be backlash or whatever. But with Kojima, you can't say because it's Kojima and Kojima's a god, quote unquote, and that's the way you're supposed to approach him. There can't be any nuance. It has to be you either hate this game and you love it, and the people that hate this game, they have to be critically, or people that are critical of this game have to be attacked. Um, There can't be no in-between. There can't be any gray area. The fact of the matter is, is that the gameplay is lackluster, you know, f- for an action game. Sorry. There are people that are going to like it, but for people that are looking for an action game as a way this game was advertised, it's lackluster, period. And if you like it, good for you. You know, I can't, I don't control your pockets, but don't attack somebody else for them sharing their sentiments. And, 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 and I think that's where we're at, where people just want to be over the top. What, what, what do you think? I mean, I think people just want to like, be in a boat of like a game is great and like they're exclusive because we have to remember this is for right now a PlayStation exclusive. Mm-hmm. It, it, it gets special treatment from us from those certain fan bases. Just like if it was an Xbox exclusive, you would have a bunch of Xbox defending it. I think they just don't want to hear people talk shit about it. And also, per I think personally that this game, the reason they're a little extra sensitive is because they know deep down this game doesn't have much merit in it and its gameplay. Mm-hmm. They know it. They don't want to admit it, but they know it. Yep. I mean, because to be honest with you, the game is out, right? Yeah. Everybody who talks about the game, I've seen very <laughs> few, very <laughs> few <laughs> talk <laughs> actually about it. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't talk about the gameplay. Exactly. They don't. Yeah. None of them yeah. do. I mean, what they do is they show you some nice screenshots, maybe a cool Easter egg, and maybe appreciate some things like the online functionality. I think I saw one person enjoy the boss fight. Like, I think the majority of people who are playing the game, I swear, are playing to get from cutscene to cutscene and continue the story because that's what's the big redeeming quality about the game. They just love the story. And even all the game looked fucking weird when it was revealed, but even I'm enjoying the story. I can't describe it well, but I think it's cool. Yeah. And that's and 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 the story is definitely there. Um with that being said, I, I do think that it, at the heart of this, this is just a bully tactic to intimidate you, intimidate me, intimidate, well, mainly you, but but intimidate anybody that is unbiased about Kojima or Sony 
And they're trying to intimidate us from giving any reviews and being critical. Because again, like you said, now that you're playing the game and they can't say, oh, you didn't get to episode four, the good part. You know what I'm saying? Now they're trying to just get you to shut up. And to me, and I, I want to get your thoughts on this. To me, this is reminiscent of when my ex bot brethren was out here with their damage control of Crackdown 3, where we had the infamous boom-tastic moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, Anybody trying to make this gameplay seem like it's more than anything than what it is, which is just a walking simulator, to me, I think it, they're, they're, they're just playing a farce. Like, do you, Would you agree to that right now? And you're a lot farther than me. Would you agree to that? Uh-oh, I think we lost. I think we lost Nethos for a second. Okay, he had to mute. So with that being said. Oh, so, oh my bad. No, no, that's all right. That's all right. Unmute. No, that's okay. That's okay. No, I was just saying... Did you hear? Did you hear my babble at all? Yeah, but you said if it was a farce. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I absolutely agree with that. Okay, I think I do. I mean, I mean, at, at the end of the day, what I find weird about this game is like this game when you were calling it out for the gameplay they showed or whatever, when you were saying like you know it looks a little empty and all that deal. We already talked about it. Uh, you were always attacked. You said you didn't have the mental fortitude to understand the game. <laughs> don't understand Kojima's work. <laughs> Right, and to be fair, I never like beat a Metal Gear. I may have played a little bit of them, yeah. but I just don't like those sneaking type games. I don't yeah. even like Splinter Cell. The yeah. only Splinter Cells I've played are the ones with the co-op aspect. Yeah, I like yeah. co-op. Yeah, I feel that's you. about it. Right, I feel you. so that's why I never bothered with Metal Gear, and I didn't want to start on like the fifth one. So, with that said, I went to this game because they said they edited the map or whatever. I got to experience it. Well, I'm experiencing it, and it's exactly how I felt. I mean, because to be honest, we're gamers. We can look at gameplay, and we can you typically judge if that's for you. Like I looked at Crackdown, I knew that campaign wasn't for me. I, I knew I wasn't yeah. gonna enjoy that at all. <laughs> and I mean, that multiplayer looked dreadful, but I had to see how dreadful it was. I had to experience how bad that was. Yeah. But it's okay for me, even without booting up the campaign. People acknowledging I never boot up the campaign to call Crackdown three dog shit, just looking off gameplay. But we know we wouldn't be able to do that with Death Stranding. Exactly. So I'm playing the game, but people don't want me to continue the game because then they can't necessarily fall back on anything. I think right now, I'm, we mentioned earlier, the damage control and the more bully tactic maybe is yeah. they're trying to say, I'm lying to myself when I secretly love well. <laughs> I, 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 I don't get it, man. Like, hey, look, bro. All right, so... Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Well, let, let me let me make this comparison. We're gonna get to voicemails and calls soon, y'all. Uh, let me just go to the chat real quick. Uh, we got Cold Blood Sensei. He said, "Play Fallout seventy six on the weekend. Worst experience in my life." Hey, I I, I can dig yeah, it. Yeah, but at least you booted up and experienced at least you it. You booted it up. I can dig it. Uh, Joe Hansel says, "God of War masterpiece. Death Stranding is a story of a guy that wanted to make his own version of Evangelon." In my opinion, <laughs> that's funny. Um, let's see here. Uh, do, do me a huge favor, man. Uh, show, 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 show the channel a little support, a little love. Y'all can leave us also a message in a free messaging app. And again, until we go live, if you want to just leave a voicemail. You can leave a voicemail right here at this phone number. That phone number is 724-739-3612 in the States. We don't bite. Um, all right. So so back to the subject matter at hand. I, 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 I think that again, and I know I mentioned this earlier. Get your thoughts on this, Nethos. Highlighting bright spots in the game. And being fair, like when you posted about how you like the zip line element being mm -hmm. added, isn't equivalent to liking the overall product. And let me give you a scenario and see if you uh, enjoy it. You, 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 can, you can agree with this or not. Like, say before a sports event, you know, we got two teams, two competing teams that are about to go at it, right? And we don't know who's going to win. I got my facts and you think team A is, I think team A is going to win and you think team B is going to win. We, we, we have our thoughts. And then let's just say team A and team B go at it regardless of whatever sport it is. And there's a victor. Now let's say if you watched the game and saw what went down and who and how, and let's just say team B won, right? I didn't watch the game. I just waited till after the game hook back up with you and start giving you my opinions 
uh, of the game, right? After the fact. Now, how valid am I when I didn't even watch the game? My pre my pregame analysis may have been valid because the game didn't happen yet. And that's equivalent to us talking about Death Stranding before release. But once we got the game in our hands, all of our pre-notions or whatever can be validated because we're playing the game. Do you think that you as someone that actually watched the game in that scenario has more validity or I do someone that don't, that's just talking out the side of their ass without any validity. I mean, who, 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 who what makes more sense to you? Uh Oh, you have to mute yourself again. Okay. So to answer my own question, but before I get to that, I want to say big ups to fatal charade, uh, for resubbing to the channel. I appreciate it. I'm sorry. Did you hear my babble needles? Uh, I unfortunately I did not. Okay. What was it? Oh, I'm sorry, tsunami. My my spam bot. I got to do something about that. Uh, tsunami said I finished the game, but no, I was saying I gave in a scenario of where me and you are like pregame analysis. It doesn't matter the sport. It could be anything. And then you watch the game, but I don't. And then after the game comes on, who you and, and I admit, oh well, I didn't even watch that game. But here's what I think happened and why they, you know, why they won. You know what I'm saying? Who? the more valid sportscaster is it me or you and, and i said in that scenario it would be you you watch the game like people don't need not to mistake our pre-game analysis with what we have to say after the game we had thoughts about a game we played it and it either solidified our thoughts or changed our mind example horizon zero dawn for you so again what i mean do you think it's wrong should we not play these games if we if we're if we're not liking it should we stop or do you think you're far enough in the game are you going to stop now Nethos? is basically what i'm asking are you going to stop playing this game now because you're far enough and and you've made up your mind what's the deal um you know i'll be honest like i see that a lot so typically if you're playing at something you don't enjoy you don't really have yourself go through like 50 hours of it right i can mm -hmm. understand that. that i mean that's a lot of time every day that's the 50 hours you're never going to get back but at the end of the day there's very few games like a game by Hideo Kojima himself who just get kind of special treatment. So, like, I, as someone who's never played a Metal Gear, well, I played them, but I never beat a Metal Gear, never owned a Metal Gear. This is my first Hideo Kojima game, really. I need to experience this game for myself. I need to experience why he gets all this hype. I mean, I've been called a non-gamer because I've never played a fucking Metal Gear. I thought that yeah. was crazy. <laughs> so, like, I need to experience this game for myself, and I need to see what this hype is about Hideo Kojima. Like, Hideo Kojima is someone who's very well-known. I think he's the most followed game developer in history. Exactly. It's crazy. He has a huge fan base. To be honest, maybe I'm wrong, but did they Sony really market Death Stranding that much? Because I just feel like this game's selling out. I didn't see commercials all like that. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know what? We've seen some, I think it was more of a social media marketing. Like I didn't see TV commercials or anything like that. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. I mean, yeah, by word of mouth, just by the Kojima's making a game. That's all you need. You know? Yeah. Saying? And like this shit's selling out. I mean, it's doing well. Maybe it's not doing as well as the days gone. Mm -hmm. Price it. But I mean, it's not doing crackdown three bad or anything. Right. Exactly. Like, yeah. I mean, I, the game's doing fine for itself. So, you know what? I'm, I'm a little shocked by that, but, um, yeah, I agree. If you don't like something, you don't have to keep playing it. But as someone who's going to make a review of the game, who wants to give a full in depth analysis or whatever, you must complete the game. You are fraudulent if you don't. Yeah. Like, Look, my, my PSN is open. You can check my trophies or whatever. If you, think, if you don't think I beat the game, you can do all you need to. I'm posting clips proving I'm playing the game. I'm posting clips showing the positives, showing the negatives i'm giving you my thoughts bit by bit but i'm going in with an open mind look moss i don't know about you but i don't want to throw 60 dollars down the drain i don't want the game to be bad who wants to play a bad game no one no I, one wants to play a bad game i mean some people may want games to be bad for some console war thing but that's not what i'm doing if i was doing that i wouldn't give the game any merits i wouldn't admit any positive but even i'm admitting i like some things i like the yeah. online functionality I like the storytelling. I think the graphics are beautiful in certain areas, especially the cutscenes. And you know what? I like some of his ideas. And one thing I, got, I forgot to say is I love, and I know this might be controversial about the game, I love the way the uh, markers work in the game. So 
typically in the game, you put your marker on your destination, and uh-huh. the game plots it out for you, the best route, the safest route. In Death Stranding, that doesn't happen. Yeah. So what you do is you actually make a few points to get to a destination, and it's up to you to find your path. And I think that's dope. I think survival games should adopt that. Like, I think Fallout, for example, right? Mm-hmm. They should adopt that in their uh, realistic mode. You know the, the hardest difficulty mode where you have to sleep and stuff? Mm-hmm. I think that could evolve Fallout. I think uh, in Outer Worlds, too, on their supernova mode, I think things like that would be dope. It would add something new to the survival aspect because that was something I always thought was kind of weird in open world games. Like, your character always knew what route to take. It's cooler if he has to actually get a map and plot that route out and figure it out for himself. That adds something. I, here's... And and that's a lot of positive talk, right? For a game I just want to hate, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, here's my, and this is just an opinion. It's all subjective. Um, I get why he, they do that because if you did just think about it, and me and you talked about this pre-show, like, I don't like it, but you do. And, but yep. I can, but I can get, I can say on air, I can get why he did it because can you imagine if they took that element out? Like this game would be super yeah, empty. Yeah, exactly. It would be super empty if it just routed its course for you. So in order to add some type of, I don't know, some type of layer dynamic to it in some function, they had to add that. So I get why it's in there. It's just, to me, it's more of a hindrance and annoying. But I do agree with you in a survival game to make it more immersive, like don't get it to where you don't make it easy to know the best route. Like in in, in a world world survival situation, you're not going to know the best route. You know what I'm saying? Like that easily. Like I get that. I just think the way that it was implemented may be a little clunky, but again, that's all subjective. But to your overarching point, Nethos, you're pointing out positives in the game. So you're not just carving it up and doing fanboy fodder. So, um, before you, are you, Nethel, you ready to, to check out some voicemails or take some calls? You, you in a good place? To uh, absolutely. I think we had a pretty good discussion thus far. Yeah, thus far. So no, let, let's do this. Let's see if anybody's left a voicemail. And again, in order to do so, all y'all got to do is call into uh, the magic number. The magic number is, let's see if I can find it again. I'll, I'll just post it back here. It's 724 739 3612. Um, and big ups to Soft Soft Bun is now following. Thank you, Soft Bun. <laughs> what the fuck is that name? I have no idea. Now we got a call here, so let's let's check this out and see if this is going to be a nice phone call or if somebody's gonna. Uh, hold on. Uh oh, we got a call coming in right now. All right. Hello, you are live on air with Nethels and MM2K. Let us know what your thoughts are, my good gamer. Oh, it's dirt. Oh, hold on, dirt. For some reason, you're not coming through. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One second. Oh, Let me, I'm acting here, dirt. You can hear. Yeah. For so, hold on. Let me do something. Holly, say something again, dirt. Can y'all hear dirt griggity? Can y'all hear him? Hold on. Give me one second, dirt. Something in here. Let me add something in here, my good brother. Give me a second. Can't hear. Yeah, like we can we can hear them, but they can't for for whatever reason. All right. Um, what did I do? Dang, Nabbit, desktop audio. Do I not? I have the desktop audio on, right? Let me do something real quick. Properties for the desktop audio. Ah, let me think. Um, Skype is. Say something now, Dirt. Yo, what's up, y'all? There you go. Okay, okay. All right, Dirt, go ahead, man. What was you saying, bro? No, man, I was just listening to you guys' conversation. Uh, but, you know, I've been playing it also, Nethos. And, um, you know, I think the game started off pretty good. I I like the cutscenes and the story's pretty decent. Um, mm-hmm. How far are you in, Nethos? Because I missed it when you said how far you are. Um, I'm actually on Chapter 6, and I'm thinking I'm almost Chapter 7. Okay, so you're about, what, like 15, 20 hours in or something? Yeah, probably that. Maybe a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, Chapter 7, I believe, is a halfway point. Oh, okay. Yo, so, listen, this me personally, 
I'm about, I'm only in chapter two. I'm about maybe five, five hours in. I think the game is okay. Um, but of course I haven't got a vehicle yet and all the sweet stuff that Nithos is doing the zip lines and stuff like that. But <laughs> what do you guys think? Like, I just tuned in to you guys, so you probably already mentioned it. But what do you guys think about the whole Kojima thing with America? I, like, I know you guys are going to get on that if you haven't already. Like, what do you guys think about that, man? Because I think that's very interesting. His comments were very interesting. Um, you, you first, Nethos. <laughs> <laughs> well, from the little bit I've seen, it, it, it just looks like he doesn't necessarily like that the, um, I guess, American audience, because that's where he got his worst reviews. You know, just don't really adhere to uh, different style games in his opinion. Though I find that weird because, like Moss pointed out, some of the most highest rated games ever this generation are games like God of War. Has no pew pew elements, supposedly. And right. uh, Uncharted, I guess, has pew pew elements. But Hellblade, that certainly doesn't. Like, I, I don't right. know. I think he doesn't like that um, the American audience may speak their mind a little bit more compared to some of these other outlets from, like, let's say, Europe or whatever, because I think uh, some of these European outlets, and may maybe I'm putting my tinfoil hat on, but I think they just really like uh, Hideo Kojima, the name, and he got higher points for that. Right, right. Because, yeah, that's true, because I would I always give Baron credit for something he said on the podcast. He said, I, was, I, I have never seen the game where the positive reviews and the negative reviews said the exact same thing. And I said, damn, that's a great point. So some of those, like you said, Nito, some of those other reviewers overseas, they, I don't know, they just love him. That's what it seems like. But anyway, guys, I'm about to get out of here, man. Just wanted to call it, check in on y'all, man. I'm listening to the stream, so keep on doing your thing. Hey, appreciate it, Dirt. Appreciate it, and 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 right. glad for when you call when you call in, man. You know what I'm saying? And 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 check out Dirt Griggity's video. Um, he has a very good video. And again, Dirt likes you. You you're, you you think it's okay so far, right? Oh, I think we lost Dirt. Yeah, yeah but uh, no, he he has said he's enjoying the game. He's enjoying the game. All right. So again, man, I. I think the American comments are unfortunate. They're very unfortunate. And I think they are synonymous with a very old, very trivial mind state, right? It's one thing where YouTuber A or or content listener B gets on Twitter and says stupid, silly shit like that. But... And what I'm talking about for those of you that aren't aware is that Kojima said that the reason why his game, why Death Stranding is being more criticized in the States is because we don't have the capacity to understand games above shooters. <laughs> and I, I mean, again, I'm not someone that gets insulted by stuff, so it doesn't insult me because I don't like the motherfucker, but I find his comment insulting. It doesn't affect me, but I find it insulting. And it's like he was set, he was locked in a hyper chamber with, with Top Dog, big up to Top Dog, with that mental <laughs> for, fortitude bullshit. And, and, and it's a farce for the simple fact that in America, the top two games, this generation lauded usually on everybody's top 10 list, right? Or what? God of War and Witcher 3. Those are not pew pew yep. games. Just this year alone, Nethals. What are the top acclaimed games? Sekiro, Devil May Cry, uh, Cry 5, and Outer Worlds. None of those are pew pew games at heart. So, being that those are the facts, what do you, why do you think Kojima said something like that? Um,. You know, let's let's be honest. Out of all his reviews, the more negative ones just came from the American outlets, and I think that's because some of the reviewers well, just calling it out. I think they were just being more honest about the game. Maybe they liked the story or whatever, but they're being honest and they just did not like the gameplay. Where some of his European reviews, right? Even though they say a lot of the same negative stuff, 
they just for whatever reason give it a very high score in the <laughs> 90 a 100 why would a game yeah. you find boring get high uh, reviews yeah. we all know you don't hold the same energy for other games yep so is it that maybe it has Hideo Kojima's name on it facts facts I, I gotta ask that because if we all have the same negatives your review score cannot be significantly different. Like, one can't be a 6, the other be a perfect 10. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's absurd. And to me, it, it, it says less about... It's, it's, it's funny that everything about this game is in relation to America. You, you think we don't have the capacity to understand above shooters, but you base your game on America. You know what I'm saying? The irony is, is, is oozing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, and the stupidness of that comment is oozing. With that being said, um, I well let, let, let me let, let me just remind the folks before I get into my spill. Call in, leave us a voice message, 724-739-3612. What do you think about this whole Death Stranding thing? What do you think about people doing full-fledged reviews, even though they may not like it and, and they may be critical of it? Do, do you think that us as content creators, do you prefer us not? to play these games and not talk, but talk about them or you prefer, prefer us to play these games and be educated on what we're talking about. You know, let's, 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 let's get to the nitty gritty. With that yeah. being said, um, I, I think about this, about the game and I'm nowhere near as, as far as you are, uh, uh, with the game, but from what I've played, I think the game looks gorgeous. I think the cutscenes and the story is unique, but the gameplay is a dud. It's a dud mm -hmm. for an action game. I mean, this was advertised as an action game. Uh, to be honest with you, Moss, maybe this is insulting for some people. I think it's just a dud for a game. <laughs> like, I just a game. Like, here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to throw a monkey in the wrench here, right? Gotcha. This is not, this is not in the script. Yep. So, I have a friend. I'm not going to name names because I don't want anyone to attack or whatever. Uh -huh. And I don't... I don't think I necessarily agree with his opinion, but he says a game like this and getting such high praise is almost as dangerous as microtransactions in the gaming industry. Mm -hmm. And what he means by that is if this game gets such acclaim and gets so many people to defend it and overall change the course of the culture. Yes. That it could influence yes. other games to start taking this yes. course. You start adding just walking elements. Start adding tedious things. Yes. Like, here's the thing. In my opinion, if you take out the cutscenes and Death Stranding, yes. and if you just make the world less annoying to just traverse, I'm not talking about take away the enemies. I'm talking about just putting fucking less rocks. Just yeah, putting yeah. less rocks in the way, and maybe a few less mountains, the game will take half as long as it's requiring. It will go from 50 hours to maybe 20. Yeah. Yep. If we just take away all that shit. All that shit. Yep. No, I agree. Like, yeah. like, he purposely does things to elongate the game. I have one example. I'm not going to spoil it. But let's just say a certain chapter, right? I have to go all the way up to this mountain. It's like Mountain City. And this lady does not want to connect to the whole network that I'm trying to build. So I have to go all the way back to the basically the south of the map. Mm -hmm. Travel this long-ass distance and get her sister who has to convince her. Now, here's the thing, Moss. Typically in an open world game, you would fast travel, right? Yeah, exactly. This game does this game has fast traveling. You want to know how the fast traveling works, Moss? So you have to go to an annoying private room, which is again annoying. And Red Dead got shitted on for that, and exactly. I agree with yeah. people shitting on Red Dead for doing the same thing. But at least in open world games, including Red Dead, when you fast traveled, you fast traveled. And this, in order to fast travel, you must leave behind practically everything i'm talking about your cargo your weapons even your fucking shoes <laughs> you yeah are you serious well okay go ahead i'm sorry Neethles. go ahead yeah like i had to leave all that stuff behind so it's like i don't i don't know what i'm gonna do now and I picked up the sister, right? So I pick her up, and you have to carry her on your back. She doesn't just walk like a normal person. I, I don't get it. Um, so she, she doesn't walk like a normal person. You have to carry her on her back. You know, like in the beginning of the game where you had that certain cargo, we don't want to spoil her or whatever, right? Yeah. You got to get to the incinerator. Yeah. So it's like that. The same thing, really. <laughs> but, but this I'm doing that, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, the, the person is alive. <laughs> um, I, you know, I guess I take a vehicle or whatever, but in order to get back my stuff, I have to go to the same private room that I originally fast traveled. So if you forgot what private room you use, because sometimes people can just build ra- yeah. random private rooms across the map, yeah. you lost your stuff. Can you imagine that? Let's say you find a random private room on the map and you don't remember where it is. Yeah. You just lost your gun, Moss. You just yeah. lost your shoes. All your shit. Wow. Like like I'm let's I'm going to the north of the map. Like northwest, I'm all the way southeast, right? So mm-hmm. you can just imagine that on that. I'm, it's America. Yeah. Imagine having no shoes or whatever and having to travel from southeast all the way back to northwest and get just back your stuff. And then get to the destination afterward. <laughs> like, do you know how tedious and how much time he added by just doing that? But that's the point. We talked about this pre-show, Nethals. That's the point. That the, the crux of this gameplay, at the crux, at the heart, is such a dud. It's so shallow that the superficial things had to be added in order to, in, in, in order to artificially bloat the game. You add, like you said, you can't travel on land. They punish you for traveling on land. We talk. I don't know if we talked about it here. We talked about it before, pre-show though. They actually tra- ban. I mean, uh, 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 punish you for traveling on land. So what did they do? They throw in rocks, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Then, then, then this. You know, instead of you just doing a fast travel and 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 cutting down and getting to the nitty gritty, because there is no nitty gritty. You got to take off your shoes and socks and your underoos to fast travel. And you got to remember which station you fast travel to, right? Yeah. In order so, like, to when I have that cargo, game. right? Uh huh. I can't, yeah, when I have that cargo, like the sister, I can't just fast travel to where I was supposed to be or fast travel back to where I originally fast traveled from. I got to travel. Exactly. When you have that cargo, when you have a person, you can't just fast travel. Yeah, that's that's insane. That's insane. Again, dear, simple simple things that have become uh, elementary in 2019 have been tinkered with, and that's fine. You know, you you go outside of the norm, but when the outside of the norm, when the, the when the little abstract things like how you handle the map and how you fast travel, when that becomes the crux of the game besides the gameplay itself, then that's a problem. And especially because this is labeled as an action game. So with that being said, I want it brings me to my next point again. Call in. I see y'all in the chat. I I I, I see people like Platinum. He says, so does Neth like the game or not? Nah? And Neth can answer for herself. Neth, what are your thoughts on the game so far? Oh, Neth had to step away. Okay, Neth said that he doesn't like the game. He doesn't like it. He he told me what his score was for the game. There's certain elements in the game that he appreciates. And Platinum, you've played games where you appreciate certain elements in the game. We got to get out of this outrage culture mind state of, oh, it's either trash or it's the GOAT. Everything can't be the GOAT. Everything can't just be totally trash. There are certain elements within this game that he appreciates. Right, and I think Nethos is back. But Nethos, Platinum was yep. asking, what are your overall thoughts about the game? Look, my overall thoughts about the game, and it, it hasn't changed. It's a game where I don't play for the immersion. I don't play for enjoyment. I don't play for the actual gameplay itself. I play to really just progress the cutscene stories. <laughs> like I just play to get to the next cutscene. <laughs> like oh, that, that's the best I can give it. And, and, it's sad. I think, in my opinion, this fails as a video game. Yeah. Like, nice. does it have good things? The online's fantastic. I love the into the way he did that. In fact, I would argue maybe that's a better way for Bethesda to add an online element to their mm-hmm. Fallout until they get Fallout 76 the way it's supposed to be. Because even you can agree, Moss, it's not what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's I think that would be a cool it was thing supposed to add. To be, Fallout 76 was supposed to be Fallout 4 that you could play together. And it's not, it's clearly not, there's, there's the terrain, there's the, the, the enemies, but I do get it. Like the, the full fleshed out NPC version of it is not there. I, I do get that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, to be honest with you, if we're going to argue he made a new genre, which he didn't, uh, it would be that he added this online functionality. Oh, we'll be right back. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So. I, and and I do and I it, it, to Nethel's point, 
I remember coming across a portion of the game where I was like, oh shit, that looks cool. And it was the beginning, and I don't want to spoil it. It was um Jor or J Lore, where there was a bunch of ladders. It's at the beginning of the game when you're trying to get to the incinerator. You guys understand what I'm talking about, right? And I saw ladders and ropes. And when I saw the ladders and ropes, I said, ooh. Other players left this. They made this traversal for me cool. That's going to be a cool element of the game. Doesn't mean I, I enjoyed the experience, but I do recognize where certain functionality in the game, you know, it's like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? But uh, overall, that still didn't taper um, my overall thoughts. Um, let me let me, let me me put it like this until Nitho gets back. Here goes my thoughts of the game. And I'm like five hours in, right? And I think five hours in, any game, even a longer game, can in a lot of ways tell you where a game is headed, you know, for the most part. And if your game, I don't care what game you make, if if it takes longer than five hours for you to get the game going, then that's a you problem, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I get that there's game, like Bioshock 2. Bioshock 2's pacing was horrible. Um, at the beginning of Bioshock 2, it was like abysmal, but then within a couple of hours, it revved itself up. And Bioshock 2, if you are pl- if you play the whole game in totality, I want to say it's about a 40-hour game, right? Um, and I end up loving the game, but then the end part, the pacing was bad too, even though I end up loving the game. Um but anything, well, if it takes it over five hours to get revved up, then 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 it's, that's a problem right there. You get knocked for that. Here's my thoughts on the game so far, and I'm going to do a full video on this. I think the positives are the game looks gorgeous. Okay, that's it for the positives. The negatives are the gameplay loop is is abysmal. It's empty. It's not satisfying at this point. Balancing over mountains to carry items from one destination to another is not engaging at all as far as gameplay is concerned. The stealth sequences are shallow. Hold your breath. Then right before the stamina gauge depletes, release R1 quickly and do it over again. The baby is annoying. The map selection is overly cumbersome. And me and Nethos talked about that map. He likes it. I don't. It's overly cumbersome. Okay, I'm back. Both the map and the baby implementation seem like clunky implementation to force PlayStation 4 controller features. Having the only enthralling parts of an action game three hour or five hours in to be the cutscenes tells how far this game has failed to execute in gameplay. And I'm sorry, Nethos, I was just giving my synopsis while you were getting things together. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I can... Just from that little gist I heard, I think I understand what you were saying. But at the end of the day, I think we're getting to a culture, and this is what I will say is getting dangerous. I wouldn't say Death Stranding is dangerous in itself, that it's as dangerous as microtransactions. But I think there's new culture mm-hmm. of um, story over gameplay is yeah, dangerous. it is dangerous. It, it, like, this has been brewing for a while. Now, it wasn't as bad because you could argue, yes, God of War is an f- enthralling story. And some people play it for the story. But at the end of the day, God of War has very good gameplay. Thanks. It does. Thanks. Even Spider-Man, yes. people would say, oh, you're playing for the story. But mm-hmm. I enjoy the Spider-Man gameplay. Some of the side quests are dog shit. I'm not going to mm-hmm. deny that. But I enjoy Spider-Man for its gameplay. This game, I literally don't enjoy it for its gameplay. <laughs> I don't. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm playing it late at night just to get the game fucking done. Just to get done it over because it, you've already hell. started it. Yeah. Let, 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 me, let me break. Can I give you this scenario, Nethos? Say, okay, you you like the Joker movie, right? Yes. I, I loved it too. I love the Joker movie too. And I think a lot of us that are listening to this, we love the Joker movie, right? Let's just say that instead of the movie, instead of Warner Brothers releasing Joker as a movie, they decided to release it as a game. As an, And basically what it was is what we know as the movie chopped up into different cut scenes like this, right? And in between mm-hmm. it, the, there was the, the interactive part was it was the beginning scene where Joker's twirling the sign, 
Let's just say you did that for 30 hours during the game. You're basically twirling the sign. You're balancing the sign and twirling it outside and trying to keep the kids from stealing the sign. Let's just say if that was the, the, the gameplay loop. And then the last two hours of it was the last two hours of what we know was the movie. But before that, you got like one decent level where there was some cool, you know, experiences like that, like that one uh, World War II scene that's, that, that, that's out of Death Stranding. Mm-hmm. Would, would that under that scenario that I just gave, would that be stellar gameplay? Even though we know the Joker movie as a movie is phenomenal. Would that be a stellar game? No, especially if you were spending hours with just a twirling a sign. Like, no, it has fundamental flaws that just aren't fun. Like, if we want to make Joker a good game, we would add maybe survival elements, maybe make, like, the chase scene after the sign, like, a gameplay element. In fact, that's another thing I don't like about Death Stranding. It has these cool cutscenes, right? With Mm -hmm. gameplay. To improve the game drastically, all you need to do is just make the cutscenes interactive. You know how God of War switched from gameplay to cutscene seamlessly? Like, it was like, damn, that's a cutscene now? Yeah, exactly. And then some of them were even interactive? That would improve Death Stranding in and of itself. Just make these cutscenes at least interactive. Maybe, like, remember, like, when you're in the back of a truck and you're in BT territory in the very beginning? Yep. Maybe add, like, a sneaking element. Like, you're trying to, like, huddle or something. I don't know. Do something. Make (laughs) the game interactive. Don't make me put down my controller. (laughs) Literally, in the beginning of the game, I would put down my controller because I knew I wasn't going to do anything. Like, it shouldn't be that ridiculous. Like, at the end of the day, a game needs to have good gameplay. It's a video game. It's interactive. It's not Netflix. The people who are playing this solely for the cutscene, solely for the story, and saying, like, oh, that's a redeeming quality, that's all you need? You know what? I think you're the true Netflix gamers. Yeah, facts. Because you don't care about gameplay, you yeah. care about story. Secure and it's cool to like a story, but at the end of the day, it's a video game. It's not a movie. A story elevates a game, absolutely. Maybe you can turn away from some of the gameplay and some of its clunkiness and some of its flaws for the story, but the whole game doesn't revolve on a story as its merit. And I get it. There's some interactive games, like a Detroit Become Human. But at least in those games, you have a cause and effect mechanic, you have choices, that's the type of gameplay. Even the Outer Worlds, right? You can argue the game isn't really a shooter, it's a talking sim. You just sit and you talk to these NPCs. Yeah. But even that's a gameplay mechanic because you're making decisions, you're using your skills, you're persuasive, your intelligence stuff. That's a gameplay mechanic. The Joker movie, if we were to make that a good game, we can... Uh, give Joker choices. Does he fight back? Does he pull a gun? Does he maybe attack an innocent civilian? Does he stalk a person? People who've seen the movie understand what I'm saying. At the end of the day, gameplay is king. It's what should matter. Not this whole story narrative. That's what I think it's about gaming. Where, where it's heading right. And I think a bigger problem too, Nethos, is the fact that um, let me see if I can find it. Um, Porter Rock had said something that I thought was very telling. And again, this is Porter Rock. This is Mr. PlayStation himself, right? So if you don't want to take it from me and Nethos, because you think that Nethos and I are just hating, maybe, 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 maybe you'll enjoy this from Mr. PlayStation. Let me, let me just move some things around real quick. Let's see, hold on. Let me this. Oh, da, 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 da. And let me go to this. All right. All right. Okay. Y'all can see that. Okay, good. So I'm going to read this tweet from Nethos. Uh, and y'all can't see room of death because room of death blocked me, <laughs> but that's here nor there. And room of death, which is uh, Tony Polanco. He's a big PlayStation guy. He works for a geek magazine. I think it is. He had wrote that on the heels of a lot of the death stranding reviews that, um, you know, games don't have to be fun in order to be stellar. And this is what Porter rock said. Okay. Porter Rock said the problem is gaming journalism are trying to be like movie journalists slash critics. Movie critics can go say a game is not fun based, uh, uh, but describe how impactful slash emotional a movie can be. Gaming is quote unquote interactive. The interaction has to be fun, but now journalists are trying to redefine fun. And he finishes with this with Nichols. He says, accommodate their profession and see if they can be uh, on the same play plane as movie critics. Listen, 
Gaming journalists will never be movie journalists. You have to take uh, t uh, talk about the interaction, aka gameplay. Gameplay needs to be fun. That's the whole point of gaming. Remember, it's games. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Porter Rock hit the nail on the head, and people yeah. don't want to accept it. And the reason they don't want to accept it, even though it's clear as day, it makes 100% sense, and you would apply that to literally any other video game, mm -hmm. they don't want to hear it because Death Stranding just simply has lackluster gameplay. And it's coming from a very, very famous developer, Hideo Kojima himself, Someone who some people call God Jima. So if you were to say this game is bad, you're shitting on his record, and that cannot happen. You could not shit on the man behind Metal Gear himself. And you know, I brought up Next Gen Show. Maybe you would have something to say about it, but it's Hideo Kojima. Is he really the man he's hyped up to be, or was it him and his team at Konami and management at Konami nice. that got those quality products out there? And I also want to add this. So Porter Brog brings all that up, right? Mm -hmm. Fantastic points. Um, actually, I don't think Port Rock even started Death Stranding because I don't think he wants to, but yeah. uh, <laughs> that's besides the point. That's besides the we, point. We, we, we ain't going to say that. We're going to let bro, we're going to let him do what he's going to do, whatever <laughs> about that game. Right? Uh, I, I will say this. Uh, a, a game has to be fun, but people are trying to, like, change the term fun. They're trying to say, like, it's the hippie fun. I think that's what you brought yeah, exactly. up. Exactly. No, fun is enjoyment. Even a game like Sekiro, a yeah. Dark Souls, a Bloodborne. Yeah. You, people who like those games, they enjoy the challenge of those games. Nice. Those are the type of people who put the hardest difficulty on their games. Yes. Some people like the challenge it adds to the game. Do, do they yell? Do they get frustrated? Sure, but that's part of the fun to them. I mean, I play online, right? I play Halo. I play COD recently. That's what Z's all about. And guess what? I'm trash talking all the time. I'm yelling. I'm screaming. I'm getting mad, but I'm having fun. I fixed my Nightbot, y'all. So, you know, caps away and emojis away. You know, yeah. I fixed it. Um, I mean, be getting bad at a video game doesn't mean the game isn't fun. Maybe, I mean, it can be. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I enjoy the game. I like a Part of those emotions is what the, comes with the enjoyment. Uh, so that's going to bring us to the latter part of this discussion. right? Um, and again... If you guys want to call in, let, let's talk about this, y'all. We're not, look, man, we don't bite. We're not going to attack anybody. We're just sharing opinions here. I see y'all vocal in here. I see Cold Blood Sensei. I see, a, I see a good number of people watching, but nobody is commenting. Cold Blood Sensei's having, a, a spa, he's having spasms in here. He's, one thing he says <laughs> is, there's no one said shit, but now an exclusive from Sony gets all the shit from the most pettiest shit. So that, that's a whole bunch of shit there. Uh, that's some serious shit. Uh, with that being said, no, I mean, Cold Blood Sensei, I get where you're coming from. You like the game, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's all liking a game is subjective. We're talking solely about people that know in their heart and hearts, and that may not include you, know in their heart and hearts that this game is lacking in what expectations were, even for them. And they're trying to do a boom tastic, and it's not working. It's really making them look pathetic. With that being said, um, if you like the game, that's fine. We're not just stomping on PlayStation. We took, gave you two prime examples. Before God of War came out, I just knew that it was going to be the quote-unquote another Sony interactive movie. I got the game in my hands, and I fell in love with it. Every single one of my videos from me playing the game from beginning to end or on YouTube, go check them out. Nathals, same thing with Horizon Zero Dawn. So Horizon Zero Dawn was the, was, the, was the can that we love kicking around for laughs, right? He plays it. What now? Now Nethos likes Horizon Zero Dawn. So it's not a hate thing on PlayStation. It's just, it's not us. Y'all got to look at yourselves in the mirror and say, are y'all standing for this game? Are y'all making excuses for this game? And, and trying to say that it's stellar. When the gameplay don't have broad appeal, I don't think you can say a game is stellar when it doesn't have broad appeal for its genre. It doesn't everybody doesn't have to like it, but I mean, if you're gonna label this an action genre game for action genre lovers, this should have broad appeal with them, and it doesn't. Period. What do you think about that, Nethos? Oh, he had to go. All right. So um, until he comes back, I just want to talk about this a little bit and again call us in um the game let's based upon what we feel about the game i 
I want to talk about what we think may have happened. Like, how did the game get like this? Because um, with exception of maybe Cold Blood Sensei, nobody expected this game, the gameplay, to be like this. I mean, we got all this badass imagery of goo gods and all this shit going on and baby throat babies and all this shit, right? Nobody thought the gameplay would be this simple, I'll put it. Nobody thought the gameplay would be this simple. With all this extravagant shit happening around it, nobody thought that. The game with all this high production value surrounding it, but have such cheap and empty gameplay, that's, that's, those were my words. It's symptomatic of something. But what do you think that something is, Nethos? Are you back? Yes, I am back. Um, I'll be honest. Maybe, I, I don't know stuff about financials, right? Like, that's more of your field. But yeah. I think maybe, like you said, they potentially cut the funding. And that, that's very possible because at one point you have to market it, right? So that has to be considered into the budget. So I wonder if all the money they gave them really did just go into those actors because they didn't do that shit for free. I don't know why people think that, that happens. Oh, he's friends with Hideo Kojima. He joined for free. No, he was paid. Anyways, you have to, you have to acrobatize years out of your life to do that type of shit. So, these people are paid, right? That's a high budget. I wonder if the budget he used to pay these actors, if he needed another similar budget to that to finish off the gameplay. I think that's what happened. I think he prioritized these actors and all the storytelling, and when it came down to get the gameplay done, he had a shoestring to get it done. He had shoestring. I, I, I'm, I'm there with you. All right, we got a voicemail here. Um, I'm going to play the voicemail, and then Noah was going to call in. And I'm sorry, guys. You, you, you guys were calling, I think, and what happened was is that the game, I mean the game, the Skype wasn't working because they were trying to, uh, <laughs> they were trying to, uh, um, Oh, we got a call coming in right now. Let's answer it before we get to the voicemail. All right, gamer. The, I, I believe this is uh, our homie seven oh six gamer. Is this is this our homie uh, uh, Noah? Yo, yo, what's good, brother? Hey, what's up, Noah? What's up? You on with Nethos and MM two K, man? What do you think about the, the the game of the generation, man? It, it beat out Sea of Thieves. Uh, that is uh, Death Stranding. What do you think? <laughs> hey, man. See, I I think this. Poetic justice, bro. It, it really is poetic justice. <laughs> and I say that because this entire generation, bro, whenever on the Xbox side we had a game, it may not score high, mm -hmm. but we say, hey, we like this game, you know? And we get shitted on so bad. Yeah. And I'm not saying Death Stranding is a bad game at all, bro. It's, 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 not, an, it's not an appealing game. Yeah, okay. You know, it's not going to appeal to the masses. As, as someone who plays different types of games, yeah. I can understand when... You know, somebody might not be feeling a certain type of game. It's not, it doesn't really have that mass appeal. Mm -hmm. But for those people that like, that were pointing the finger and laughing, all oh, you playing that trash Sea of Thieves, you're playing that Crackdown 3, mm -hmm. and now you're defending this, this Death Stranding game, and, <laughs> and, and this shit is, is lacking in gameplay. Yeah. I, find, I find it very poetic, bro. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah, I totally agree. What do you think about that, Nethos? Look, look. It's not his point, right? Exactly. So, Cobo, since they brought it up, like, you know, we're being nitpicky or whatever. Look, we're not talking about how, like, the game is bad or whatever, and we're attacking people for liking it. I mean, it is a bad game, but we're not attacking people for liking it. <laughs> we're just talking about that it, it's weird that people go in here and defend it. They hop in your threads. They claim you like it. They claim you're just being annoying or whatever. It's like, we have the right to criticize games. Mm -hmm. I have a right to criticize this. I have a right to criticize that. Just like how you had the right to criticize Crackdown, Facts. Sea of Thieves, and all those games, Anthem, and half of you didn't even boot that shit up. Yeah, absolutely. That's, That's the biggest thing. Bro. Games can be criticized. That is the biggest thing, and a lot of criticism comes from people who haven't played a game. Now, I'm not saying, like, if you, if you look at a game and it doesn't appeal to you, you know, that's one thing, but you can't really call a game trash if you haven't have to stick exactly. to try it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, but it's, I, it's, you know, I, I love it, you know what I mean? I don't I don't go by reviews. If I if I find a game interesting, I, you know, I'll go try it, I'll rent it, buy it, whatever. But, you know, I don't. I can't knock anybody if they like Death Stranding. You like what you like, you know? 
What are your yeah. thoughts? Is and then, he- like Cold Blood said, like, you know, he likes the game. He's more or less respectful. He stays in his own lane about the game. Uh, other people don't. They go into your threads for maybe disliking the game <laughs> and explain, well, no, you secretly like the game. No, you're just, you're this and you're that. It's like, you can't tell me what my opinion is. <laughs> right. Right. And then, and then, like, when I'm seeing online, too, is I see more people defending, in a sense, defending the game than, than pure pure enjoyment, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. people are yeah. posting, like, there's guns, there's guns, look, you can enjoy this game. I, you know, I can't, I don't know, if you like the game, you like it, but a lot of people are on a defensive end because of this game, and, they, you know, they're quick to post stuff online, you know, to make look, the game seem more appealing than what it actually is. Look, 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 let me say this, Noah. When people got God of War in their hands and they were truly amazed, you saw yeah, gameplay bro. footage every five minutes. Like now you're seeing yeah. people regurgitate and recirculate the same motherfucking scenes that somebody put out and you know at, the, at launch. It, it's it looks pathetic and it looks it, it doesn't look genuine. And that's the point that I'm trying right. to make. Right. So. When I when I popped in God of War and played it like an hour man I had to get my Xbox beside out bro like like, <laughs> like everything to make sense in the universe man I feel <laughs> sense is bullshit <laughs> I, I don't get that feeling with I don't get that feeling with Death Stranding if anything I'm like thank you Phil <laughs> <laughs> like, like Phil what you like, like Noah you're on but social again, media you like you're it, on man. Twitter yeah right you're on social media you're on Twitter have you noticed like the people posting things about their strength? They're just showing Easter eggs and maybe like just screenshots of the beauty. They don't actually show the gameplay, or they don't talk about the gameplay itself. What does that I'm about to make you? a post actually, bro. I'm gonna tag you. I'm gonna tag y'all in it. But I want to ask people: Is Death Stranding a good game, or um, a good game with nuances, or is it a bad game with interesting moments? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what is it? Yeah. Or is it good all around? For the people that like it. Yeah. Yeah, call in, let us know, man. Definitely. You know, let us know what you think. But, no, I appreciate the phone call, Noah. I, I, I just don't, I don't get sure. why, I, I don't get why, again, people think that they can validly defend this to no end, but say what they were saying about Crackdown 3 and, and really Back, think that... that, that that's my point, bro. Like that's yeah. my point. If I if I'm trolling and I'm making fun of the game, that's the only point I'm making. Like I don't I don't care what you like. You could, you know, yeah. you could play you could play Pac Man, you know, in 2019, <laughs> and it could be your favorite game in the world. That's you. You like yeah. what you like. Exactly. Totally agree. Hey, thanks, Noah, for calling. in. Appreciate it, bro. You have a good one. Hey, you too, man. And hey, keep doing your thing, man. I'm loving the show. I appreciate it. All right, that was our brother Noah. Triple B brethren. Um uh Nethels, we got a voicemail, it looks like. So let me let me get to this voicemail. Let's see what the, this person is saying. Let's let's let, let's get their thoughts on it. All right. Yeah, I just think it's funny that uh your gaming live streams usually have a lot of hiccups, but this podcast just pulls off without a hitch. But anyway, this is Fatal Charade, and then I will call back later. Uh oh, hold on, we got another call coming in. Let me get to and we'll have to get that voicemail later. Oh no! All right, let me let me play the voicemail again because the call coming in kind of disrupted that. Yeah, I just think it's funny that uh, your game line oh, you have a lot of hits. Oh, yeah, we'll just answer that Let's first, I call. guess. All right, live caller, you are on air with MM2K and Nethos. We talking Death Stranding. What, what's your thoughts? You know who it is. It's the talking shit Xbox guy that everybody loves to hate. Uh-oh. I just had a quick quick <laughs> tsunami was good. What's up, tsunami? What's going on, brother? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I just had a question for, for both of you. And this is nothing about the game, it's just about the culture. Okay. Who do you think is I don't know if it's I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, but who do you think is the best cap or the worst cap? Who's the, the most cap in this side? Do you think Tony <laughs> is capping harder for this? Or do you think Xbox was capping harder for the, the shit we got in the past? Because I haven't seen too many negative uh, uh, sentiments about this game from any pony. But I have seen niggas say, see if these dog shit, that's Xbox fans. I've heard people say Crackdown is dog shit from Xbox fans. 
I, I I could tell you maybe one pony, and it's probably probably fucking Trey that said a bad <laughs> word about it. Trey, but Trey like, yeah, who, who do you who do you, who do you think is the worst cat? PlayStation hey, 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 Xbox. A hey, hey, tsunami. They they say Trey is confused sexually, so we don't know who he is at the moment. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> um, I don't. And hey, let me let me let Nethos tackle that first. Nethos, who you who you think is the most capitalist? You know, as of right now, obviously it's going to be the PlayStation side, right? But to be fair, you know they're on the Kojima hype. There's Kojima Knights on that side too. Like yeah, that's just a yeah, big goo over more there. Powerful. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, we also have to remember Xbox guys. They look <laughs> pathetic in comparison because they're all dead. Like yeah. like the Xbox side got slain. <laughs> generation. Like they're, they're not even a fourth of their fighting force. Let's be honest. <laughs> so y'all only sending like, out two tweets bad a week. over there. <laughs> Like the only one that kept like that is like maybe Tim Dog. Tim Dog. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> Tim hey, that we respect. Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Tim Dog, and then the opposite side is like it's like uh, J Dub. Like that's <laughs> I will cap anything on brand. And and, and and to be real, tsunami. Like people say, dirt is is, but dirt. He he he's more nice about PlayStation games than he is about Xbox games. Really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. So, and he'll call know. out he'll call out the dogs to Xbox game too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I mean right now, yeah, I think what it is is I think it's a double whammy. Um I I, I agree with Nethos. I think it's you got people that are Kojima stands, then you got people that are PlayStation games. Because the tsunami to that point, and you can start tweeting about this. When the game <laughs> play first started getting out and people started saying, Oh, this is some dog shit. What did people say at first, Tsunami? Well, this is a multi plat. So we don't care. Oh, but yeah. Then, but yeah. then when Colin Moriarty and Push Square came out and said, no, Sony owns the IP, people started capping again. So it's all it's yeah. all bullshit. It's all bullshit as far as I'm concerned. It's like it's like they, they, have, they have to move the goalposts to make sure that they in the right. So, oh, no, it's, it's, it's not a Sony game. Oh, exactly. it's a Sony game. But y'all didn't play it yet, so y'all don't know if it's good. Or oh, y'all played it. Or oh, y'all just buy it. Y'all don't see it. Y'all got the and intellectual I, fortitude. <laughs> and I will say, yeah, and Tsunami, to your point, I will say this. At the very least, at least the, the, the Xbox guys played, uh, what's it called? They played Crackdown. Now, it could have been because it was just a dollar, but at least they played it. At least they started it. Mm -hmm. the, these PlayStation guys, when I talked to them, like, I tried not to embarrass them, but some of them I talked to <laughs> behind the scenes. And I said, did you boot the motherfucking game up? And they're like, no. Nah. <laughs> so I'm still, I'm still wondering if Manhattan booted up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure if he's, he's talking about me. I'm like, did you boot it up? <laughs> hey, yo, look, hey, he look, hasn't. We, we we gonna have to call Manhattan matter, Albuquerque. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll be willing to say I think more Xbox guys, as far as you know, Triple D have played the game than than play, uh, PlayStation dudes. Facts, facts. Yeah, we so, play them games. I don't know. We I, play them games. I think I think the Captain Crown might have go to, go to PlayStation this year. Yeah, they might. They might. Be yeah, as right of right now, now absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, they might mm -hmm. be holding it right now. I totally agree. Well, thanks for the call, Tsunami. Appreciate it, bro. I know you're living this up. Living it up? I know you're loving this right now. Hey, I, hey I got to get I gotta get my sucker dabs in when I can because, you know, <laughs> it's been rough out here. So I don't feel bad for no pony. <laughs> <here, so. laughs> I got to get it while I can. After Ori, so I don't know. I have to wait a little while again. Yeah, you have to see. Yeah, exactly. But appreciate it, bro. Have, <laughs> hey, have a good one, man. All right, take it easy. All right. No, I think that was a good yeah. point. Um, go ahead, Nethos. What were you gonna say, bro? Yeah, I'm about to say. You see that right there? What he, how he was talking? That's why J Dubs picked him to be his disciple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Tsunami, you're my apprentice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, you know, I, I think they bring up a point. That's where I forgot to mention. So, like, it's so okay to shit on Sea Thieves Crackdown and all that, right? Yeah. And Xbox fans, they more or less have to accept. It. I mean, there are some there capping, but I mean. We even make fun of the ones capping for it because they look fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. But like, why is it not okay to criticize someone? Yeah, it's not. I mean, Days Gone. I mean, this isn't the only one. I mean, you remember when we were criticizing Days Gone? Mm -hmm. Oh shit! Yeah, oh, I, mean, bro. I never really played Days Gone. I mean, you played it and you called it just overall mediocre. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily bad, but yeah, not bad, mediocre, but mediocre. And far from its greatness that yeah. they were having in 2018. Like, exactly. I don't know. You, they, you get all the damage control. Oh, you see reviewers that they're, they're wrong and. uh Let's have this weird picture of the girl. I don't, I don't know. There. I I uh, think Nethos, and again, this is going to be controversial. Um, but 
Fuck it. Two beans in a bucket. Fuck it. What I've observed from my, and again, I've given it pause to, to my Xbox brethren like crazy over Phil Spencer. So I come down the middle, even though I may have my own biases, I'll come down the middle when it comes to analyzing shit. You know, um, I will say this. I truly think that PlayStation, a lot of PlayStation people still are having P PSTD over last generation. And they refuse to give a leg up because they don't want to leave any opening for Microsoft to, to, you know, try, try to compete again. And I think that's sad. I mean, cause look at it. And, and I say this because look at it. Microsoft has a whole bunch of money. Microsoft did take the crown from them. You know what I'm saying? From the almighty powerful PlayStation. Who would have thought that after the mightiness of the PlayStation two, how they walloped Xbox that that following generation, it would have switched so dramatically. PlayStation had 70% mind share and then they end up splitting it down the middle with X. Who would have ever thought that PlayStation never lost anything to anybody? And I get that mm -hmm. console sales may have went this way, went that way. It doesn't matter. Xbox still killed them in software, right? When, when it mattered, you know what I'm saying? When it mattered, they still were killing them in software. And who would have even thought that that would have even happened? And I think that still resonates in the mind of a lot of PlayStation people. So therefore, they are adamant. They're not going to give up an inch at all. Not to say that there's Xbox people that don't give up an inch. But man, like this level of capping for PlayStation when y'all don't even play the games. Y'all don't even play them. Y'all not even playing Death Stranding. It's great, but you don't even have it in your possession. It's spooky to me. What do you, what do you think about that? Hey, look, man, if it's a Sony exclusive, they have to defend its win. Like, um, what's an exclusive that went over, that became multiplied after a while? Uh, what, what's an example on the Sony side? Uh, what was that? What was it? Oh, uh, probably Crash. Crash, yep. Crash yep. Bandicoot, right? You remember mm -hmm. that, that remaster? I remember Sony, like, that game was so beloved to, like, oh, yeah, it's just Crash. It's just crash. Yeah. Who cares? Yep. Like, like, that's the mentality over there. And I get it. It's something that's left over because Sony and Nintendo or the platforms that still have exclusives like that. Mm -hmm. If Sony ever did day and date uh, PlayStation Now service and obviously PlayStation Now is on PC and all that, we hit streaming, whatever, you know, a lot of that mentality might start going away. That might start crumbling. But, you know, it, it is what it is. So back to Death Stranding. I. You, you said you weren't sure what could have happened because I, this is, this is how I, I take it. I don't, I don't fully blame Kojima for this output. Here's what I think happened. What we, and we have short term memory up until I think it was 2015 Nethals. Kojima had a uh, Kojima alone had two of the most expensive games ever made in the top 10. Kojima alone. I can't remember which of the Metal Gears it was, but Kojima in a list of top 10 with all the developers, the dozens and dozens of developers out there, him alone, he had two of the most expensive to make games in history, right? And mm -hmm. I think it got to a point to where Konami was, he wanted to he wanted to do a bungee, he wanted to make something else. And Konami was like, bruh, no. You're going to make your bread and butter and you're not making this loopy ass thing called Death Stranding. We don't, what is this? And he's like, well, I don't know yet, but you know my pedigree. And he's like, they're like, no, no, fuck this. Swallowing babies and, and, and black goo milk monsters. We're not playing that game with you. Fucking make another Metal Gear. And then that's where their relationship soured. And I think that in his heart of hearts, Kojima had in mind a badass action game, right? So then he gets picked up by PlayStation, or his idea gets picked up by PlayStation, right? And they're like, we're going to support you. Please help us develop what is now the, 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 the what we know as the Decima engine and all this other, and you can use this and, you know, all this other shit. And they got them going to Sony for screen capture and all this other stuff. They were all into it. And then what happens? The Jim Ryan regime starts to emerge, right? And Jim mm -hmm. Ryan is a straight businessman. I don't think he has the admiration for Kojima like everybody else does. He doesn't feel that. No, he, he, he doesn't talk about Kojima. Have you noticed that? Exactly. He's not. Yeah. He doesn't he, tweet yeah, or anything. Yeah. Yeah. This is all Shuhei. I think even Sean Layton come out of, you know, coming out of, come out to soup kitchen to tweet something about that. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> but you don't see shit. Jim Ryan has it, like you said. And this all this big op-ed about the PlayStation movement, he hasn't talked about PlayStation's biggest title yet. Because he don't have that same love affair that all of the old regime have and all of you have. This is the head of your operations right now. You got to take that into consideration. I'm going to say this and shut up real quick. So he comes into power. He's like, what the, f I remember PSX Neethals where it was Sean Layton, Mark Cerny, and Andrew House right after he retired. They were all on stage and they were talking about Death Stranding and Mark Cerny uncomfortably laughed. We don't even know what this game is yet, right? I think that spoke wonders to Jim Ryan and Jim Ryan, as he became got power he said no fuck this we got all these actors in here we don't even know what the fuck this is like the hell with this release this motherfucker 2019 because we don't have a big ticket game coming out late 2019 for holiday season release this now whatever shell of a game that you have make it work and then as they got down to the end of the release date oh this game ain't gonna get the the, the well reception that we think it, it or we needed to get fuck it Let's play that console warrior game. Let's make it, a, let's announce it's going to be multi-plat. Let's say it's going to be on PC and let's not speak about it any further. And you got Yoshida behind the scenes tweeting and everybody else tweeting nothing from Jim Ryan. Not even a peep like you said. That's my thoughts. What do you think about that? Do you think that's plausible it, at all? You know what? When you actually draw all that together, you should make a video on that alone. <laughs> but um, that's a great video. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. You know what's interesting? Sony never does holiday games, do they? Especially for their big titles. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They don't. They, they usually release it, their shit it, It's September. weird to start with this one. Yep, exactly. Yep. Yep. I think uh, with the way Jim Ryan is, I think he just says, get that bitch out there. Get that, yeah, get that bitch out there. Get that <laughs> get shit that, out there. Get that bitch out there. <laughs> like, here's the thing. We, it doesn't make sense if Kojima went from a solid five, six-year dev to just three years to get his Facts, masterpiece yes. done. That doesn't make sense. Yes, absolutely. Especially with him working with a brand new engine. No, that doesn't make any sense. Facts. I think he needed a minimum of four to five. Well, I'm not even saying four. I think he made him a five year to get the, the proper game done. And you got to remember, really Nethos, after the ink was signed or dried, he immediately worked with Guerrilla Games to enhance Decima. So a lot of that mm -hmm. three years, he was using to enhance Decima. So it wasn't really a full three-year development cycle. Mm-hmm. So. And uh, they didn't the release, like, it just kind of, like, happened. Like, the game just kind of went gold all of a sudden. Yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I will say this. This is a positive about the game. The game is surprisingly very polished. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I really haven't yeah. run into glitches or anything. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The biggest issue that I've run into, Nethos, is um, I, we were talking about this pre-show. I mean, and I'm on the base PlayStation 4, though. That is. That, um, yeah. The textures look great, but when, when it rains, for some reason, the textures look real washed. They look Xbox 360-ish. But, you know, besides that, no. I, I haven't run yeah. into any bugs. It's real polished. Yeah, it's real polished. And I think I'm on the Pro, so maybe I just don't notice that as much. Maybe this happened over there. But, um... At the end of the day, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. Because Jim Ryan, he doesn't tweet about the game. He doesn't look like someone who would care for this type of game, this Kojima shit. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, this game was probably very expensive. To pay all those actors, that probably cost a solid AAA budget. And when they look, and when you probably went to PlayStation again, look, I need this budget to complete the game. They're probably like, just get the shit out there. Yeah. You're not getting any more funding from us. Exactly. You're already putting us in the hole. We're lucky it has your name on it, so it's going to sell regardless. Yeah. Look, like, and, and look at Konami, right? Mm -hmm. Look, I'm all for devs getting freedom and making new IPs. I'm very angry at Microsoft for not letting Bungie create Destiny there. You could add Destiny exclusive. If, if, I don't know if it would be Is a better it, game, but it would still be a big hit, right? It would have been. It, it, we would be having different conversations this generation. We literally would be having different conversations. It, it literally helped PlayStation win the generation. I'm not saying that's the sole reason, obviously, but yeah. it was a big feather in their cap when they didn't have anything but them having at the end of the day and i know i don't want to talk about corporations wallets or anything because that's not none of my business but it is a business at the end of the day they're not just going to give you this ridiculous budget on a new ip or whatever like at the end of the day they have to get their money they're going to have to make decisions and i think death stranding was their decision look we gave you enough funding get the shit out there i think that's what it was and maybe if you asked for a smaller budget, maybe if you didn't use all these big actors or whatever and pay exactly. all this money, maybe he would have had a more worthwhile game out there, which he should have done. I think that's why Konami more or less 
um, got rid of him. I, I think they didn't want to keep overpaying his big projects. You could remember Metal Gear Five mm-hmm. didn't have to sell like a bunch of copies, to even be in the yeah, red or the, whatever. Yeah, be in the black. Yeah, in absolutely. the black. Yeah, in the black. Yep, absolutely. So, like his games are just expensive. Yeah. Yep. No. Great point. Great point. Um. And I, and I lastly say this. I, I, I say this. Um. Another supporting fact on why I think that that's the most plausible thing that happened is. Remember, Kojima said he didn't know what the game was even going to be. He just had cutscenes ready. Remember that? And mm-hmm. um, he had big name actors and stuff. And, and the fact that it only took three years, like we said earlier, um, along with the old regime being out of power, the regime that maybe would have had a little bit more leniency with them. If you look at the cutscenes, I want to leave this scenario and then maybe go to this, get your thoughts and go to the final voicemail if we're not going to get any more calls or anything. But I want to say this. If you look at the cutscenes and all this other stuff, they look so grandiose opposed to the gameplay. That's why I say that had to be the only thing. He was looking to make something bigger. Think about it like this, Lethals. I say Lethals. After the podcast, let's go to let's go have lunch. I, I know this five star <laughs> I know this five star restaurant with the top chef in the tri state area. You're like, okay, cool, MM2K, let's go. So we're sitting there having lunch and you're looking behind the chef's door and you see motherfucking flames flying and flour being thrown everywhere and bottles breaking and this motherfucker yelling, hey, and all, all this crazy shit surrounding it. And then he, he walks through the door with a bowl of banana pudding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you're like, hold on, what the fuck? I said, hold on, you was doing all this back there for a bowl of banana? Like the cutscenes, the storytelling, the aesthetics... All that doesn't match with the, the shallowness of the gameplay. So that's why I say we were supposed to get something bigger and better, but the new regime in Koji, that Kojima had to deal with isn't like that. And I say that to say this and get your thoughts on this, and then we can start wrapping things up. Do you think that with Jim Ryan at the helm, pretty much, and the dude from uh, a host from Guerrilla Games, them pretty much leading the charge with PlayStation and the studios, do you think that there's going to be a, a ding and a quality type of output that we're going to get from Sony here out? What are your thoughts? You know, bringing up Jim Ryan, the new regime, I wonder, is this no regime, is it like the old regime in the sense of them, you know, trying out these experiences or whatever? Like, you know, with the Yoshida's regime or whatever, they would try these like different games, like a Death Training or whatever, and really focus on these story driven games, like a God of War and stuff. Obviously, those games are still going to be there. Obviously, you're going to get God of War and all that. But do you think with Jim Ryan, he's going to go from, you know, them trying out new things, them taking risks, to maybe a more Microsoft 360 type strategy and just going with what works? That's what I fear with Jim Ryan, in a sense. Yeah, I, I, what if I, he I, stops yeah. with this new IP thing? What if he just starts focusing on what works? Yeah. I to- I wholeheartedly agree. Like I, Jim Ryan is more business than anything, and I think he's. Just, I think the reason why the Sony brass, the board, let him win within this turf war, because they're like, we did great, but like Z always says, we showed out a whole bunch of money to do it, and look what happened to them. In the year of greatness, you had a stellar twenty eighteen. All you did was just have a twenty nineteen where. You- your AAA games weren't as good as 2018 and the stock was having hits. People were, investors were telling other, I mean, uh, analysts were telling other investors don't invest in you in 2019. All this crazy shit happened just in one year. And I think the it, Sony board got nervous and they looked at somebody like Jim Ryan and they said, get us out of this mess and keep us financially astute. What do you think about that? You know what? That's crazy, Moss, when you think about it because, I mean, that, that was a good thing to not invest in Sony in 2019. We saw how that turned out. Yeah, exactly. But, um, <laughs> but like think about it like that um 2018 it was a great year right a fantastic oh, yeah. year for sony out that playstation was the place to be you don't even think about capping for that's how good it was but was their success based on prior ip yeah i mean god war is a prior ip now it's like a basically a new game absolutely mm-hmm. god spider-man yeah it's like a brand new game because other ones were dog shit but that's not a new ip that, that's fucking spider-man uh, what what else did you have in 2018? That, that like a third game, right? Um, was Detroit? I think Detroit came out and, and that didn't like sell. Uh, yeah. a, a and that one was more of their dud. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was more of their dud for 2018. And 2019, 
look at it. They took risks with two brand new IP. Both of them were kind of duds. Mm-hmm. And like, Days Gone was dud critically. It sold all right. I mean, it sold well, actually. Death Stranding, yeah, it's on off Kojima's name, but I, I, don't think, I don't think Sony wants to greenlit a sequel. Yeah. I, I think they're like, oh, you, you can keep that shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, like, see, I, don't... I think it might go to a more Microsoft strategy if they keep on like that. Like, what if they repeat uh, 2018 or whatever, but with God of War or whatever? What if they move to more Halo, Gears, and Forza strategy? Mm-hmm. I hope that doesn't happen, but yeah, you don't know what yeah. you're mind. Yeah, I know. With Jim, again, and the only way to assure... One thing I will give to Sony that I will say that Microsoft has a problem with. is see, Microsoft sometimes thinks its own shit don't stink. They live in the Silicon Valley thing, and they have this air to them, particularly Phil Spencer, um, that, you know, we know what's better for you, so you're just going to deal with it until everything starts crashing in. I will say, at least with Sony, public perception is fundamental to them. Hence why Jim Ryan said that 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 business line, our game, we want to keep our launch game so pure and precious and keep and, and, and like a virgin. You know what I'm saying? That, that, and, that's and, that's why and even people were making up quotes with that type exactly. of shit. Like they're making up like I see all these articles now. Yeah, their games are too precious for a game type <laughs> model. It's like he doesn't say any of that shit, but all right. <laughs> I know. But he knew the seeds he was sowing when he said that. He knew how the public would react and he knew they would do shit like that. So Sony that's a Sony tactic. They know how public perception is. That's why they keep stomping on Microsoft's neck every time they make an announcement, they got something bam. You know what I'm saying? Bam, bam, but you know what I mean? So uh, again. I will say that you guys have a lot more power to persuade Sony than Nethos and I do as Xbox people. Xbox people, they're a little bit more stubborn. I do think that there's some level of concern with Jim Ryan, but I do think if you guys raise your voices and make things adamantly clear, a lot of stuff, not all of it, but a lot of stuff can be averted. You know what I'm saying? Um, With that said, Nethos, you want to get to this last... uh, voicemail and then we can close out. oh absolutely we've been putting that one off yeah all right let's do this because we kept getting calls all right so let's let's see who this is from yeah i just think it's funny that uh your gaming live streams usually have a lot of hiccups but this podcast just pulls off without a hitch but anyway this is fatal charade and i will call back later oh fatal oh my bad fatal hey, if you want to call back bro Call back. What it was is Skype again. Talk about arrogant Microsoft. They they were spamming me. So every time after I, we got a call, it's a new thing with Skype. I guess they want you to rate the call and all this other dumb shit. And it was blocking other calls from coming in. But fatal. If um you want to call in before we close out, go ahead and do so, bro. Appreciate it. Um, before we go, uh, uh and see if fatal call in. Nethos, any any last thoughts? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Just that point you brought up with Jim Ryan, all that it makes me think. Like, oh, oh there's a call. There he goes. That. All right, I think this is Fatal. What's going on, Fatal? How you doing, bro? I'm doing. I actually been trying to call him for a while now. Oh, oh, okay. So I'm sorry, man. It's it, it was some spamming crap with uh with with Microsoft, but here nor there, you got through, my good brother. What are your thoughts on everything we had to discuss? You know what? I can't really judge Death Stranding as a game yet, considering I have yet to play it myself. Mm-hmm. But just from the premise, I have now you, you've heard the jokes I've made about. It. I always like to call it the Naked Norman Reed Show featuring yeah. the Throat Babies. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. The Naked Norman Delivery Service. But like seriously speaking, I like until I play the game myself, I can't really judge it. But some of these fanboys is crazy. Like, I made a video about about some of these PlayStation fanboys that we're talking about. They were like, oh, Death Stranding will never go to PC. Yeah. Uh, Sony owns the death of the engine. <laughs> referring to j <J-Tech. laughs> Yeah. And yeah. To people who follow him, the people just like him. Yeah. And they're suddenly like, oh, my God, Kojima betrayed us. Yeah. Look, what has he done? Yeah. He's putting the game on PC. Yeah. Why didn't he want us? Even though yeah, would, said, would you say nine-hour podcast, Fatal? What's that? Didn't you say he had a nine-hour podcast about it? Yeah, he had like a nine-hour therapy session. <laughs> talk about <laughs> therapy session. 
<laughs> the whole, you know, I gotta suck my teeth just like JTEX. <laughs> I can't believe he may pray up like this. Like, oh my god, what has he done? <laughs> this is one less game for our fanboy wars. <laughs> you know, most of us won't play it. Yeah, yeah. You know, most of us really don't game like that, but this is just something we can't use in our fanboy less wars. Yeah. Oh dear. How dare he? He's like, and he doesn't realize this isn't the first time Sony put games on PC. They put Hell Divers on PC. They put Beast when they own Daybreak Studios. They put DC Universe Online on PC. They yeah. put EverQuest on PC, which is Planet still played Side. even to this day. Yep. Yep. And they also funded Cat. They also funded uh, Street Fighter Five, which is oh. also on PC. PC. So folks act like this is something brand new that Sony's never done before. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But again, I mean, mm-hmm. I say fatal because you create content as well and check out your channel. Leave and leave a link to your channel in the chat too, bro. Um, uh, sure. I, I think because you create content, if you can sp- scrape up the, 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 or go to freaking Redbox, dude, $3, <laughs> you know, give it a shot just so you can see the slow train wreck for yourself. I'm sorry. And again, uh-huh. I, I think it's a slow train wreck, not fully because of Kojima. I don't think he wanted the gameplay to be like this. I think Sony reined him in and was like, and with, under Jim Ryan said, hey, enough is enough. We're not giving you no more money. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Oh, well. Yeah, and after yeah. seeing like what I've seen on streams, it's like I can see why they just put Kojima on a corner and just told him just sit. Yeah. Just, just sit down because <laughs> this game is just too weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and a lot of the storytelling weirdness of it. Okay, I get it. It's cool. But again, I think the biggest whoop to do is the gameplay or lack thereof. You know what I mean? So. And also, I'm going to put the link to my YouTube in the um, Nightbot deleted it. Oh, of shit. Course. Um, hold on. Can you DM me and I'll, and I'll put it, I'll put yeah, it in here. Yeah. Too. DM me, bro. I'll put it in the, um, I'll put it in the chat. This goddamn Nightbot. I thought I fixed you. God, oh, here, hold on. I'm in there right now. Links. I'm going mm-hmm. to disable this Nightbot from being able to stop you from doing links. Go ahead and do it again, bro. Try it again. All right, hold on. I'm going to refresh the page real quick. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. There's the link to my cha- my YouTube go. channel. There we go. Also, I do live streams on Twitch here as well. So if folks want to follow me here on Twitch, they can. Yeah, drop the link, yep. man. Yeah, I already dropped the link in the chat. Okay, I don't know if cool. people I don't know if people saw it, but Oh yeah, I see it. Okay, cool, cool. All right, but hey Fatal, I appreciate you calling in, brother. Fatal is one of the biggest supporters. The, well, really now the be him him and, and and my other homie, man. The, the, the biggest supporters that I have on my Twitch channel, man. I appreciate it and, and support him. He got some good stuff, man. Definitely. All right. I'll see you guys later. I right, appreciate it, Fatal. Yeah. I'm going, Fatal. So yeah, man. I mean th- there it is, man. Nethos. How many hours you got in this da- damn game, man? I I gotta be over twenty, man. Holy like I've shit. been I've been putting in time. Like you literally are... last night I until like four thirty in the morning. I'm just trying to get this shit. Down. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm already on the half. I'm basically only getting to the half, man. I, uh, uh, you know what? I, I just gonna, want the game done. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna just have this. Do you think it will be be that much of an impact if I skip the side missions? You think what? If you you think it would it would have that much of an impact if I skip the side missions? I don't think I can side missions. Oh, it have, have as much of an impact if you didn't beat it. Is that we said? No. It have, uh, have, well, do you think that I would be missing out on too much and it would be too hard for me to progress if I skip the side missions in this game? Oh, bro, I don't touch the side. Oh, missions. Oh, you don't. Oh, Fuck damn. That. So you don't touch it. It's still. Oh shit. Oh lord. Good lord. Yeah, like. I'm at the point, you know how there's like lost cargo or whatever? I thought that was kind of cool. I stopped picking that shit up. I just, I'm just trying to get through this. Fuck all them. Like, I'm rushing through the story, man. I just want this shit out. God damn, that's horrible. Shit's man. killing me inside. But uh, back to that quick Jim Ryan thing before we close out. Yeah. When you think about it, when he first stepped in, he's talking about complacency and stuff. Like, he wants to make sure PlayStation's at the top of their game. Yeah. Does yeah. that type of talk really make it sound like, 
oh, they're going to start taking risks with IPs and stuff. Like, that sounds like kind of like old money wasting in a sense. Exactly, like, I understand. Exactly, yeah. You need new IP, you need new big IP. You can't just rely on a Halo, Gears, and Forza, right? Or else mm. things become stale. Yeah. But from a business aspect, they love old IPs and relying on a Halo, Gears, and Forza to play when. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, I, I don't know. I guess that's my only fear with Jim Ryan. What if he becomes kind of like, yeah. you know, by the numbers, by the known IP type man? Well, here's the thing, man. Here, here's the thing. What people got to understand is that it's not that a lot of these companies want to do it. Well, yeah, they, they, they're, they're, they're hamstrung in doing it. Once you become, I say mm-hmm. this all the time. Once you become publicly traded, the biggest focus is not the consumer. The biggest focus is the in, is the investor. You basically yes. just use the consumer to say to the investor, "Look, we got these motherfuckers roped in. We got them hook, line, and sinker. If you invest mm-hmm. in us." We'll get more and more of them, and your dollar will grow year over year. That's basically it. So, as as the competition around Sony is investing in things that may be more lucrative, Sony has to set itself up too to do the same thing because there might become a time sooner rather than later that that nineteen billion dollars a year don't mean nothing if Microsoft is making $25 billion with less even... Fuck the critically acclaimed. Having critically acclaimed games within itself don't make you money. It has to be critically acclaimed enough to where it pulls in enough money. You can have all the 90 games you want. If Microsoft is outdoing you in the numbers in the same field, you're going to start mimicking them, period. So keep an eye on that guys don't just play this console war bullshit and just say no sony would never so everything that y'all said sony would never do they're doing it right now so just like how we need to hold microsoft's feet to the fire as xbox fans y'all gotta hold sony's feet to the fire never say never period what are your thoughts on that nethels you know i think it's just the reality of business you have to Really do what makes you the more money. You have to do what makes you the guaranteed money. Yeah. Like, the way Sony operates with PlayStation, to be honest with you, it sometimes surprises me they're a public traded company because the stuff they do, like a Death Stranding, yeah. just seems like a private company at times to me. Yeah. yeah. Like, it really does. Like, I don't know. I can't say for certain they're going to keep investing in these big new IP. I think they're going to move to something that's more guaranteed. A God of War is guaranteed. Exactly. A loss of us guaranteed. A hey, Spider Man's absolutely guaranteed, but is Ghost of Sima a guarantee? I don't know. Nope. It looks good, but was that a guaranteed hit? Who knows? Nope. Days Gone looked good. Look what happened. Mm-mm. Well, with that being said, I, I I think I think we hit the nail right on the head. I want to I want to thank Nethel so much for coming through and clearing the air because again he. He was, they, they was threatening his life. They said they were, they, you know, <laughs> they were going to burn down villages and blame it bl- and tag his name on the walls as they did it. You know what I'm saying? To set him up and all types of crazy shit. And we just needed to clear the air, man. Like you can like, I think the biggest takeaways from today's discussion is that you can like elements of a game, but not like the total game. It, it is absolutely it is important as content creators to not just talk out the side of your ass. I mean, I get the entertaining aspect of it, but. You know, to have some validity in what you're saying, like a sportscaster, you got to watch the games. Whether they're your favorite teams or not, you may be assigned to watch two teams that you don't like play. With that being said, you got to do your job. And we're just doing our job here as content creators to have validity. So any any closing thoughts from you, Nethos, on that? Yeah, you know, I disagree with what you're saying. At the end of the day, I don't think there's any game in the world that has no good quality to it. Like, that doesn't exist. Of course, you're going to like something about any game. You know, whether it's the graphics, whether it's a certain gameplay mechanic, whether it's the storytelling, you're going to like something about a video game. So, of course, not everything that comes out of my mouth is dog shit for Death Stranding. I'm going to like a few things. But overall, my overall opinion, it, it's, it's not looking good. Yeah. As a game, I think it fails. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to play it some more. I'll give my thoughts on it, but with that said, um, you know, let's uh, hold tight, my brother. <laughs> Stay strong. Stay strong, young man. I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try this too, man. 
Woo, I tell you, that, those first five hours were a challenge. I was laughing through that. I couldn't help. I, I just burst out in sporadic laughter because I'm like, this shit is fucking ridiculous. But anywho. All right. With that said, I want to thank everybody that came through today to hear us speak our truths. And I want to thank Joe Hansel. He said, okay, wrap it up. He got, to, he got the wrap it up button. Cold Blood Sensei, thank you, man. You know, Fatal Charade, thank you for calling in. Who else we got in here, man? We got Tsunami. Thank you, Tsunami, for calling in and, 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 and being active in the chat. Uh, we we I shut down the night bot. You know what I'm saying? Devin got the box. Appreciate you, bro, as always. Um, who else we got in here? Uh, okay. I think that's it. So... What that said, uh, we know we had Noah, we had Rulio 44. He said, I'm really in, enjoying Death Stranding gameplay is unique enough for me to find interesting. It's fresh and different. I'm a huge sci-fi guy. So that's what made, it was made for dudes like me. Okay. And that's cool. That's cool. Um, and I think that's it. We had Platinum. Uh, Dirk Griggity, thank you, Dirk, for calling in and being active in the chat, bro. So with that said, I want to thank everybody for coming through. We had a very good show today. Um, check me and Neethos out, Broadband Bullies. Check us out, the best damn podcast. Later today, what time, 8 p.m. or 7? I can't even remember shit. I think you aim for 8 p.m. We're 8 p.m. Right, crew. Tonight. Yep. So we're going to go take care of some stuff. Neethos probably going to play some more Death Stranding, send out some more picks to the dismay of many. I got some personal stuff to take care of, but we will be back here. We will, No, not here on Twitter, but we will be back on YouTube at 8 p.m. Check out Next Gen 720's channel. We got a good show lined up for you, Best Damn Podcast. And with that said, y'all all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.